So today I'm just going to go over and show you how to uh, convert some manually operated roller shutters into automated roller shutters. These are some of the componentry you need to be using. You will need these at the end. Generally an A-frame ladder. That's your crown. You've got to make sure that slips on there nicely on both ends. Spins freely. We've used the FAAC brand. And you've also got to many different types of drive shaft. That's the drive shaft clip holding the drive wheel on. You'll notice that there's also a couple of little uh, divots there to basically uh, allow the rivets to pass through. More on that later. So up the ladder, remove the head box, undoing all the rivets. Basically you just drill them out thusly. Just taking care on bigger shutters that you don't damage the uh, the head box when you're holding it up because you may actually buckle it or it may fall off. Sometimes is uh, a job that is requiring two people. Okay, okay. So you can actually internally you can uh, cut the tape and have it spool out, or you can do what I've done here and uh, take it off externally, or you can chop it and uh, several of uh, these fashions and then let it go down just taking in mind that when you do let it go down it will get heavier and heavier and you require more and more pressure the further it goes down this is again from another angle just letting it down as you can see, quite a lot of uh, pressure is required to stop it from falling down like a guillotine. If you do let it fall, it can actually cause damage to either your window frame, the base, the shutter, the slat, your hands, fingers, whatever is in the way. Then you just got to drill out the telescopic plug end. It, fall, sl it slides in telescopically like that. And then it's just a matter of getting this whole ensemble to come out of the head box and then it does also uh, help to uh, just break the slats so that they can just fall out you'll see this again in a second drill out again the rivets you can do it in the head box or you can do it while after it's off remove the spool and then again, same as what's on the other end. And then just making sure that uh, there's that rivet on that spring steel riveted in there, that the, the groove in the drive, sh the drive wheel actually passes through that. You'll see this little groove in the drive shaft goes right underneath the rivet and then your collar fits in there nicely. We've got a 60mm octagonal tube on this system. Then you get your motor bracket, put it in place, drill it out a hole, pop in your first rivet to hold it in position. So you got your first rivet in position, and then you go across and you drill your second hole. Uh, we've only done two rivets on this head box because it's only a very small uh, shutter. So if we were using this on a say a four meter wide shutter we would have used probably four I would say uh, or some screws just to be extra sure and then it's just a matter of clicking the motor in this particular system has a very easy bracketing system that just clicks straight back in there's where your cable is supposed to be going so all we're doing here is taking the motor and the top tube and the slats and the springs up clipping the motor head end in first and then extending the telescopic end at the other end. So we've got to make sure the cable's pointing downwards. And here's my trick for getting the power cable to go down through the wall to the power connection below or above or wherever it may be. You just get this thing wrapped as tight as possible so that there's as little chance as possible of the cable coming away from the conduit. And don't forget to hydrate. Now we're just going to try and get this particular 
article down the wall. Not having much luck, so we pull it out, wrap it up a little bit tighter to get us a bit of a better corner so that this one's actually going downwards. So wrap it up nice and tight. Let it go, get a nice good curve on it. And this one then goes straight down, second go. I've got my man downstairs underneath the house pulling on the cable and ready to connect up the uh, terminals at the bottom to the plug that you saw before. Just giving him verbal instructions to make sure he doesn't pull it too hard and damage the motor. Now on to programming correctly. Here it is demonstrating some of the, uh, the programmings. You'll see some jiggles happening on the motors up and down. You get a short movement first and then you get a long movement with a holding down of the button. This is just setting of the, uh, the top limit and this also sets the direction to the motor. You can see the directions first button I pressed was wrong. Down is down on this particular motor. Up is up. Take it all the way down until you get all the slats nice and tight. And you get the springs pushing that top slat up against the head box. Press and hold the home button. That locks both the limits and exactly make sure the direction is correct. And we've just sent an up command. And we've stopped it short so we can kind of get all the slats nice and open. And holding the home position to set a home position. So that means when you come home you can just press that button and the shutter will open up all the slats to that particular location every time. Whether that's halfway or slats partly open is up to you. But my preferred method is just to have the slats just a little bit open. If you want to take them all the way up and get some light into the house, just press up. Now you just press down and the shutter will roll all the way down to the bottom and close all the gaps in the slats for you. And what this does is stops you from walking to each shutter and pulling on that tape cord or winding on the winder over furniture potentially with broken winders or difficult winders that get stiff over time. Saves a lot of extra effort for the elderly and disabled and also can stop kids from playing with it and tangling themselves up in the cords on the walls. Just taking it to the uh, home position and back down again a couple times. Now that they're all good and we're happy with them you can basically just go ahead and pop all the rivets back on again. No real order for that. Just as long as you're holding the head box in as you do it. Of course. You do need to make sure that the head box gets wedged in slightly before it gets pushed in. You can't just go pushing it in position need to make sure that the top fold of the head box is folded correctly in the uh, the head box at the top. That's channel 2 going up, channel 3 going up, channel 4 going up, and channel 5 going up. Select the grip control and you can command all at once with a single button press. This is the way that most people use it. You just leave it in the group option mode and you press up and you press down. Everything will go up, everything will go down. In this case I've just pressed the home button on the group channel and all the shutters have returned just to that position so there's a little bit of light coming through from the outside and can be seen from the inside and then just press down. Press home again, you'll see the shutters open up the slats so you can go to that nice little bit of light going into your house mode with the still with security. Press down, they will lock down. 
and as you, as you did before, you set the bottom limit so that the, the springs are holding that top slat in position. And what that does is it keeps it nice and tight uh, with all the slats packed down. For your reference, we've just let the audio go through for the noise of the shutter, so you can hear that here. Nice and smooth operation. Always running at a constant speed of either 17 or 12 RPM. These, these ones here are 17 RPM, nice and quick. From bottom to top in just a few seconds. It really transforms the inside uh, of your house and it cools it way down in the summertime and it keeps it nice and warm in winter time. So you can press the home position from any location whether wherever the shutter may be and it'll always return back to this location for you. Press down and you're nice and secure again. As you can see here, you can't even get your fingers in there and if you can get your fingers in there, you cannot lift it up at all. Of course with some kind of crowbar uh, mechanism you could wedge it up slightly. But if you had a crowbar, you wouldn't go for a shutter, you'd go somewhere else. It would take quite a while to get through this, as compared to a window. So, nice and secure. Please note that the squealing that you're hearing here was from uh, a guy across the road pulling something up along his driveway, not the motors. <laughs> 